I was ordained on the 26th of February, 2006. I've only served one, and that's the Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Cambria Heights. I think one of the most joyous occasions was a time in August of 2007. I had recently, you know, been pastor of the church, and so I did a baptism for six babies at the same time. It was, the, it was a crowd around the fountain, and they were all like so happy. No one cried. They were so beautiful, but there were six of them, and that was one of the happiest moments. And in the middle of that baptism, um, one of the godparents said, I've never been baptized. I want to be baptized. And I said, well, come on, line up. And I baptized him too. So that was happy for my congregation for me. We've had a lot of happy memories, but personally, I, that was one of my happiest. There are many challenges of being a pastor and being a woman. Like one man came up to me and asked me, what do they call female pastors? And I said, princess. <laughs> and another time, um, one of the members of my congregation who's left and come back four times, the first time he left because I didn't wash my hands at the right time. He wanted me to wash my hands after I touched the offering plate, so I accommodated him. He wanted me to light the table candles at the beginning of service instead of right before communion, and I accommodated him. He wanted me to um, reverence the cross when it was coming up with the elements at the offertory, and I accommodated him. But when he said to me, I just wish I could make you a man, and I said, I cannot accommodate you. And that was the real issue all the time, that, you know, I wasn't a man. So, yeah. It's very terrible when people don't accept you as being a female pastor. And also, I am sure that very few people ask their male pastors to bake a cake or cook something for the potluck dinner or run to the store to pick up this or pick up that. And I find myself doing these chores all the time because the expectation is because I'm a woman, this is what I'm supposed to do, even though I'm their pastor. It's not, not necessarily for me and my call because a lot of things that I should have been proactive in changing or more reactive in changing, I've let kind of slide. But the younger pastors, the younger women that are coming along are very different. The, I think uh, the millennials and you know those in that generation, they're different. I think there's, there's, they've broken down a lot of gender walls that have existed and they see themselves more as people in the first place rather than just women. And um, I think people in their age group recognize that it's almost a genderless world. And um, I think that's gonna make a big difference in how they're received as female pastors. They're just gonna be pastors. Because I think that, you know, with the millennials, I think that they don't see people in terms of color or sexual orientation, or they just see people as people. And um, the races are so blended, the genders are blended. So I think it's a better opportunity for any young women who want to be pastors. People in my generation have fought the good fight. And we haven't won all the battles, but I think they will conquer everything. I really do. I really, really love the church. I love the Lutheran church. I've been a Lutheran all my life. I just hope that we can figure out some way to get the people who are not part of our church to know more about us and to get them in or to get our churches out to them and grow because I really feel that we need to be more inclusive of other people, of all people, what part of all isn't everybody a part of and I really feel we have to figure out a way to go out bring people in and to grow the church. We've got to figure this out because the church is still relevant, in my opinion, and very much needed in this world. But I don't think we've been very good 
at um, going out. I don't even want to use the word evangelism. I want to take that word out of our vocabulary. I mean, just reaching out to people in need, reaching out to people who need to be part of a larger reality. What will be your best advice, specifically for this uh, woman of the future generation, who maybe are feeling the call, but they're not so sure, and they have this um, feeling of uh, becoming a, a pastor? What will be the best if advice? you are a young woman or man, and you think God is calling you to something special, if you think God is calling you to the ministry of word and sacrament or word and service, grapple with God about it. Don't ignore God because God will make a way to penetrate your highest barrier, to knock down your thickest wall because God, when God wants you, God makes God's calling and election sure. So grapple, fight, struggle with God about it, but don't just ignore it. Talk to one of us, talk to somebody. We'll discern with you because God needs you very badly and we love you and the church needs you.